Do you have sound, Renee? Can you hear me? I can hear you and I can see your slides, so you should be all set. Wonderful. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me today. I hope everyone is having a great Saturday and learning a lot. I can see the little chat messages here. I just saw it to answer anyone's questions. Welcome. My name is Melissa Armel, and as Renee said, I own a company called The Stock Swoosh. And today, I'm specifically going to talk about making money trading shorting. There's only one strategy that I trade, and actually, I prefer to short. It's not that you can't make money in the market on the long side, but I found that focusing in one strategy and one directional bias really can be very profitable. And occasionally I will go long if I can't find a good short. But today we're gonna to talk about shorts. And if you'd like more information, you can email me at melissa at the stockswoosh.com or follow me at any one of these social media handles. I specifically have a lot of videos on YouTube, um, a lot of plays of the day, and I tape the trading room occasionally and you can listen to that as well. So have you ever thought about just focusing on one directional bias? And in this case here today, like I said, I'm going to talk about shorting. I talk to a lot of different people, and some people like to short, some people are scared to short. I think in general, people have a tendency, whether they're traders and particularly investors, to want to go long. People understand going long very, you know, very well. The idea of buying something at a lower price and when the stock rises, you would make money if the stock rises at a higher price. That seems very simplistic, but many people understand that. I could even talk to somebody on the street in New York and explain it and they get it. Shorting is a little bit different. There's nothing really scary about it. It's actually a very simple concept. It's in the reverse, where you are almost betting or predicting that a stock price will drop. And you take the trade and make money then when the stock price does drop. And actually, as a trader, you can do that, and it, and it can be hugely profitable. And one of the reasons is because things tend to sell off in a big, big way when they start to drop. And things take longer to go higher when they're rallying. What's a good example of that? The market. The market right now is, is in a space where people are probably dying to short it, but it's showing incredible strength and it's not dropping. And when I talk about the market here, I'm talking about, um, I think this goes out to everyone, I'm talking about the QQQs and the SPY indexes. So the QQQs and the SPY indexes are rallying, rallying, rallying. People wanna short it, but they can't make money shorting it right now because those two indexes are rallying. It's taking what seems like a long time to rally, but we are still going higher. When the market does come in, if it ever does come in, there might be a place to short, but not right now. And if that does happen, it could happen very quickly and it could be a very profitable trade. So if you're trading right now and you're not making enough money in what you're doing and feeling like, gosh, you know, it's just there's not enough profit, you trade all day, you're sitting at your desk from 9.30 to 4, then maybe you need to look into doing something different. And, and that's what I'm here to talk about today. Not just shorts, but the strategy I trade. So today we're going to talk about how to make money shorting, and also why it is advantageous to traders. So first of all, what is short selling? This is going to be reviewed for some of you, but it's good to define it anyways. And I pulled this off of Investopedia. When an investor goes long on an investment, it means that he or she has bought a stock believing its price will rise in the future. Okay, that makes sense. Conversely, when an investor goes short, he or she is anticipating a decrease in share price. And like I said, you can make money doing that if you know where to take the trade before the stock price drops. So when sellers shorts a stock, they're selling a stock they don't own, more specifically a short sale as a sale of a security that isn't owned by the seller, but that is promised to be delivered. That may sound confusing, but it's actually a simple concept. So when you short sell a stock, your broker, which is where you have your trade account and where you have your money at, the, the, the broker will lend it to you. The stock will come from the brokerage's own inventory, from another one of the firm's customers, or from another brokerage firm. You gotta make sure that you have the stock to short every morning if you wanna take a short in something. And I always check it before in the pre-market. The shares are sold and the proceeds are credited to your account. So sooner or later, you must close out the short by buying it back the same number of shares called short covering. Okay, so you cover, or it's a buy to cover and returning them to your broker. If the price drops, you can buy back the stock at the lower price and make a profit on the difference. If the price of the stock rises, you have to buy it back at the higher price and you lose money. Obviously, you are looking to 
short and make money. So you, like I said, you're looking to take it, for example, if you short a stock at $10, you want it to drop under $10, that's the only way you're gonna make money. Because if you short a stock at $10 and it rises to $10.25, you would be down money, you'd be down 25 cents. Now let me look here at some of these questions. Um, Renee, how do I expand this little jiggy here to look at the questions? Um, you have no idea how much money you're trading. Uh, you have no idea how much money you can, how to start trading. I'm not, uh, well, we'll go over that. We'll go over that. We're going to go over how much money you need to trade, and we'll go over how uh, you know how much money you can make. And Renee, if you could just plop in there, how do I expand that to see the questions without scrolling up? Let me know. So why uh, short? Oh, go ahead. <laughs> up in the right um, of the question pane, there's a little arrow next to the X. If you click that, it'll pop out the questions, and then you can make it as big as you want. Undock. Is that it? Uh, yes. Oh, got it. Fabulous. Thank you. Uh, okay, and Brett is asking for a broker. You can email me, Brett, if you would like me to recommend a broker to you. Uh, I, you know, I really focus on shorts, like I said, so you definitely have to find a broker that has a big short list. There's a lot that do. Some are better than others, though. I rarely have to request a stock to short, but I might once in a blue moon. You can email me for that at melissa at the stockswish.com. I don't want to talk about brokers really here today because I'm not a broker, but I will refer you to, to two or three places if you want to look into them because you really do have to have a good short list at the broker. So why short? Stocks move lower when selling action or shorting action comes into the stock. The price is driven down, and if you short before the price drops, then you can make money. One of the best reasons to short as a trader is that you can make money very quickly. Now why? Because simple, common sense, if you own a stock, and I'm just going to pick one out of the blue, I'm going to say if you own Costco, and the reason I'm saying that is because the stock had earnings about two weeks ago, maybe it was three weeks ago, I was on vacation this week, I don't remember the date, but Costco had earnings and it gapped down, okay? So if you owned Costco before the earnings, you were down money, or you might have been down, or you were not up as much the day after the earnings reported in the stock. So why does this happen quickly? Because you could be in a panic mode if you're long something and now all of a sudden you were up and now all of a sudden you're down. So it come, the selling action comes in quickly because you're panicking yourself. And I'm talking about you, meaning you, you could be anyone, anyone that's long the stock, okay? So another great reason to short is that these downward moves happen in a big way and they happen fast. So when panic comes into a stock, sometimes it looks like it has no end. And you don't want to be in the long side of the selling action, which many traders don't get right about, about gaps, which is a strategy I trade and how I determine when things are a good short. I'm going to talk about that next. But anyways, you, you don't buy the stock when it's selling off. You want to short it because you need to be able to make money when it's dropping. And, and I like to do this because I like to make money fast. And when Renee was reading my intro, uh, you know, I'm good at seeing this in the pre-market and doing it into the open between 9, 30, and 10. That's the time of the day that I trade. It's, I, you know, I rarely trade outside of those parameters. And that is the time I focus on. And I am prepared in the morning before 9.30 what I want to do and I'm predicting that the selling action will come in into that period in the open. Now let's look at here what I mean by panic. So Target had a good short, okay? This was an option trade I called and you could have also day traded it and you could have done it as a swing trade. The stock had earnings closed here the night before gap down. Now we're gonna talk about gaps. This is a strategy I trade, but just follow me here. So the stock fell, okay? Open, closed here and open here the day of the earnings. Then it dropped. So do you see how the panic came in? So in the previous day up here before the earnings announced, the stock was at around $67 and some cents. And then after the earnings, the stock moved down, opened around 57 and started to collapse and fall off a cliff. Now this is a daily chart, just so you know, down here you see the dates. And here you have what happened after the fact. Do, 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 do. So this was just on Friday. Do you see how the stock is just continuing to sell off? So why short 
sometimes you will get, and I'm not saying every time, but sometimes you will get almost these dramatic vertical moves, almost straight down. Uh, which which is amazing, rare to the upside, okay, but can happen. But you get these sometimes with the day trades and the and the overnights, or the option trades with with shorting, okay, which is really really nice. So making money consistently means you have to be good at predicting directional bias. So you need to know where to short or where to go long. Albert's asking a question, how much money do you need to make? I, I'll answer this. I was going to talk about this later, Albert, but I'll answer you quickly right now because you're asking. You need a minimum of an account size to day trade at a proprietary day trading account of $2,500. I'm not sure if you could go any place for less than that. Um, and that's at a prop account, not a retail account. If you want to uh, day trade using options, then you can call up any broker out there, um, any large broker out there and find out what they require. They may be able to give you an account with $500 to do options, okay? And you can use my strategy for options or day trading. But day trading, you need at least $2,500 at a prop place, all right? And we'll talk about that a little bit more later. So anyways, as I was saying, many traders are fighting against each other for the money. You have one side going long, you have one side shorting. How do I know? Well, let me go back to the target there were people here that went long target this day. How do I know? The stock came down in the gap and rallied. So there were people here that went long target thinking that this was going to rally and fill the gap, which it did not do, okay? And, and people lost money on this here because the stock has continued to drop. It's dropped dramatically and aggressively more than $3 since this day. So you had people in opposite directions. The only way you're going to make money as a trader is if you get the direction right at the right time. And the timing is, for me, when the stock is gapping and to take the trade as a day trade between 9.30 and 10. A, a prop place is a proprietary day trading firm. I don't, want to get, I don't want to get too off target here talking about, you know, brokerages. Um, if we have time, I will at the end. But as I said, you can certainly email me and I can go into more detail with that with anyone that wants to know about uh, proprietary day trading accounts or if we have time at the end okay so in the end who will win who will win out who will make the money he will be successful this is a bigger picture here clipped of the target okay and I squish these bars together so you can see you can really see the dramatic effect that the stock has had since the earnings in just the last two weeks okay this is that that move continuing down into the Friday here, into just yesterday of the stock dropping, and where is it going to go? If you're long target or you think you're going to buy target or you're long target in here, or you're buying into the previous support, who is going to win? You or the person that's short it? Well, what do I do? I predict the direction that a stock will go when it gaps. That is what I do. It's actually what I'm extremely good at doing. It is a skill. It's a skill that I practice every day, that I practice every day for the last, you know, going on seven, eight years. And it is the skill that you would learn if you wanted to come and take my class and trade with me. And it is a skill. There are days where I take trades and they don't work. And then there are many days where I do make money trading. So there's no way that you can take every possible trade that you ever take and have a 100% win ratio but I have a very high percentage win ratio. And the reason is because I accurately predict what directional bias a stock will move on the day based on the gap. I find that shorting is very, very profitable and it is a fast way to make money to get in and out quickly. And that fits my personality because I don't want to sit at a computer all day. Now, when I first started to trade back in 2008 and really into 2009 when I developed my own system, I did sit and trade all day. And what I found was that I very often lost money. The more I traded, the more that I lost. It didn't make sense for me to keep trading. The moves that stocks made happen very, very quickly to the downside specifically in that first half an hour of the day. And every once in a blue moon, you can take something to trade it in the afternoon, but it's, it's really due to the panic of the selling action that creates the moves happening fast so it doesn't always make sense to take a second or third trade in something after 10 o'clock because you're at the whims then and the whimsy or the whimsical of the market or economic news or things that happen or 
Trump gets on and talks in the afternoon. Something could happen that moves the market and then moves your stock and it doesn't work right as a later setup trade. So you've got to watch the stock really in that open time period to see if people are going to come in with the selling action and take it when it does rather than wait for a later setup. And then, like I said, many times things, stocks will go with what the QQQs or the SPIs will doing. Whether, whether it's rallying or selling off, it will go with the market direction, which is often you know, challenging to read you know, perfectly for six and a half hours a day. But the effect of panic into a stock can happen very quickly, and Target is a great example of that. So how do I know, as I was saying, where a stock's gonna sell off? I do it by reading the gap. And this was what holds the key to predicting directional bias. When you look at a chart, you could look at something like Target or Costco or even the overall market. And you can say, well, well, here's a support. You know, here you could say, well, here's a support in Target. OK, well, how do you know that support's going to hold? As it turns out, it didn't. Boom, didn't hold. Up here, you could say, well, here's a support. This red line back in here, and I don't have the whole Target. Actually, let me go back to the big one here. Um, this is, I know this is really squished, but the red line is the 200 period moving average. You could say, well, this is support, and this is support, and this is support, and this is a support. How do you know what support's going to hold? So if, you're, if your strategy is I buy support and I short resistance, you will not consistently make money. Trading a gap, okay, is a way to consistently predict the direction. It is not just looking at the support or resistance. Because as you see here, in these cases here, it did not hold. And there were people that were long stock. Okay. Uh, someone's asking when, when I've reached a low, do I ever buy back? What do you mean a low? I don't buy anything that's gapping down. I buy bullish gaps. The only strategy I trade are gaps. I'm buying bullish gaps and I'm shorting bearish gaps. Okay. So let's talk more here about what is a gap. Here's one that happened recently. This is March 10th, Zoom Z. So what happened? The stock closed here, gap down. What is a gap? It's when a stock closes at one price at four o'clock Eastern time, it opens at a different price the next day at 9.30. And that's what happened. Closed here, open here approximately, it was around 18.10 or something like that, it opened. The stock opened, dropped, fell. This is the tail, the stock selling off and bounced. See the volume here in the day, again, a daily chart. So that's what a gap is. So I get up in the morning before 9.30 and I predict, is Zoom Z something to short or is Zoom Z something that I don't want to short? I'm not buying this either way because if it rates well, I have a checklist I use to determine that's my system, what to do with this, which is either nothing or short it, then I trade it if it rates well. And if it doesn't, I don't do anything with it at all. The kind of gaps that I do are called institutional gaps. Now, what do I mean by an institutional gap? An institutional gap is a gap that moves in the direction of the gap, like Zoom Z, down. You look to short it if it's gapping down. It is called an institutional gap because into institutional money, your large professional traders and investors are making and creating the gap. How do I know? Because I see it happening live at night when gaps happen after four o'clock or in the morning in the pre-market. So the stock right here closed at four o'clock at 21 bucks or something and opened here in the morning around 18.10. So that was an institutional gap that happened in the market. In the case of a bullish gap, professionals are buying the stock and they're moving it higher. Therefore, the stock was higher on the trading day. And as I said, I prefer to short, but you can look at bullish gaps, so I put it in here. In the case of a bearish gap, when stock is gapping down, professionals are shorting or selling the stock, and therefore the stock moves lower on the trading day. So why are gaps significant? And we're going to talk more about this in here with the shorting. They help you to analyze a large time frame, which we're looking at the daily chart, to make the trend decision on the directional bias for the gap. Where is it going to take it? Where are they going to take it? Where are the institutions going to take that stock price? Are they going to sell it? Or are they going to buy it? So all large traders of every kind look at large time frames to make decisions, particularly institutional traders. And that's who you, where you want to be on the side of because they're the ones that move stocks. They're the ones that move stocks two, three dollars on a day or ten dollars on a day from the time of the gap to the open. They help you make entry decisions and exit decisions based on small time frames, which we're going to go over some trades here. I trade on a one minute, so I'm taking the entry on the one minute. And this leads to a high degree of focus and accuracy for someone to be in and out nimbly as a day trader, which is what I am. 
So I use a daily chart to make the decision for the stock pick and the directional bias, which as I said, I prefer to short, and then I take the one minute, and that's how I take the entries. Uh, let's, let someone just wrote here, a previous presenter took an opposite position with gaps and said not to trade the first 30 minutes. I've been caught with one minute bars moving almost 1% in the first 15 minutes. How do you manage your risk during the first 15 minutes? It's interesting. I didn't listen to the earlier lectures, um, but I will tell you that all I do is gaps for eight years, and I really am an expert in this. I will say, though, that many people don't know how to trade this period. So if you don't, then that person gave you good direction. Don't do it. But if you know how to do it, which I do, or if you trade with me or do my class or in my room with me, you can make a lot of money. It is, it, it is a skill. I said that earlier. It's a skill that many people don't have. And I absolutely have it. So if you don't know how to do it, then you shouldn't because stocks move fast. That's exactly what I'm talking about. But the beauty is that if you know how to do it, you can be in trades for minutes or seconds and make thousands of dollars. <laughs> so, and also, I'm with the institutions. So the reason that I make so much so quickly is because I am, I'm, I'm forecasting I'm forecasting what the institutions are going to do. Let's just say I, I ran a fund. Okay, here, let me go back to, let me go back to Target because it's just such a great example here. If I'm, if I'm running a fund, okay, and I decide that I want to sell our position long in Target, okay, I decide I want to do it. I forget if the earnings in Target came out at night in the morning. I, I don't remember. Um, anyways, say they came out at night, and I decide we're selling, we're selling our position in Target, or we're going to sell 20% of our position in the Target for whatever reason, okay? I sell and make, create the gap, some of it, okay? Not just me. There's other people, other funds, whatever. So I sell some of our position. It creates the stocks pulling it down, okay? Get up in the morning. It's not being lifted. Stock is holding this area. I said, dump it. Dump the rest of this thing. It's crap. Okay. Or maybe I wait until the next day, see how it reacts on the day of the earnings, and then decide the following day, which as you can see is what happened in here, we're dumping the rest of the sucker and we dump it and the stock sells off. So what I do is predict the target will sell off. And as a day trader, I take advantage of that forecasting by taking the trade very quickly in the morning or as a longer term trade. But it is a very specific thing that many traders don't know how to do. And so whoever told you not to trade that time was good advice if you don't know what to do. But that's why you would come and learn from me. You would learn from me what to do so that you can take advantage of that, of that move. Because as a trader, you got to get stuff to move to make money. Otherwise, you have to take an extreme amount of risk, dollars and cents or share size wise, or have a huge account to take some massive position to scalp something for 5, 10, 15 cents. And that's not how I trade. I'm usually in a, in a, in a stock and I do take a good amount of risk, about $1,000 or a little bit more in, on, on my day trades. And I'll take two, three, four, five thousand 5,000 shares of something. But you know, I'm looking for 50 cents or 40 cents or a dollar or more. If I wanted to make a thousand bucks every day, if I didn't get a moves like that and I was a scalper, which I'm not, then I would have to take 10,000 shares of something to get a 10 cents move to make a thousand dollars. And to me, that's an awful lot of risk. I'd rather do what I do, which I'm very good at doing. And, and let's get back to what I was talking about. So, okay, where was I here? Okay, so gaps are created with large institutional money. That's what makes the gap. So these professional institutional gaps that are made by institutional investors happen and play out in stocks and they're formed by large institutional money, millions of shares, huge, huge amounts of share size and quantity of money that are buying stocks. And I play stocks that have volume, like Target, High Flyers, Microsoft, okay, Costco. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the stock direction to play the gap. And that's what, I've, that's what I've created. And that's why for me and the people that come to me and learn from me, it is not risky to trade in that period of time. It is very specific and it has a high level degree of accuracy, but you absolutely have to know how to do it. So I'm confirming that the money is going to go with it in the pre-market before the market even opens. So I have a formula to rate and qualify the gap in the pre-market, or you can do it at night. 
and it gives me the confirmation and conviction that the large institutional money is on my side and therefore I'm going to short it or play it. So if gaps are an event, it's an event that happens in the daily chart of a stock and it creates a sense of urgency. And in the case of shorts, it creates the panic. And sometimes in the upside, it actually creates a sense of urgency too, which is why you kind of seen that happening right now in the QQQs and the SPY in the overall market, okay? The, it's almost like there's a sense of urgency coming in that people aren't long and they're, and they're missing the rally. Um, and, and in fact, I heard the presenter on earlier who was talking about he, he missed the rally and I forget what the stock was, but yes, many people have missed the rally because they didn't go long when the market was already higher. But guess what? It kept going and it's still going to keep going. So waiting for pullbacks, you, you, you all very often miss the move. So when I go long, I don't wait for pullbacks either. I'm going long a bullish gap that rates well in my system. So anyways, gap trading is incredibly powerful. It's, it's a powerful, powerful way to trade. And it is a skill that you would, you would learn from someone that's good at doing it like me. And it is very profitable because you're trading with institutional money. And that is what moves stocks. Now, someone mentioned about different kinds of gaps. Is there more than one kind of gap to trade? My professional opinion as a trader and, a, and an educator now for you know five years is no, not with a high degree of predictability. So my answer is no. That there's only one kind of gap to predict and that's gaps that are moot by institutions. Because if you cannot accurately predict something, there's no way for you to trade it and there's no way for you to make money. So what I do is predictable. That's the difference. Whether something fills a gap or does this kind of thing or that kind of thing, there's different names for different gaps. To me, there is only one kind because to me, there's only one kind that you can accurately predict consistently to make money, okay? So you need high probability. Anything that can put the odds in your favor to trade will give you an edge, and so I created my own system. And we're going to look at some trades here in a minute. My system gives anyone that comes and takes my class and learns from me an edge because it is predicting what the stock's going to do with the rating system before it even happens. It reads the price of the gap and using technical analysis at an advanced level pinpoints which stock to trade that day and in what direction. And I usually do one trade a day. That's all that I do. I might rate five different gaps in the morning, but I'm usually only doing one stock or one simple per day. They can be used for long-term trades. I'm not going to review options here, and I'm not going to review swing trades, but you can use them for long-term trades. I made me think of pay here. I clipped this chart again. It's going back here for a couple of years. Pay was a, was a day trade that I did back in 2012. To this day, in 2013, five years ago, the stock has held the day of the gap or the short of the gap that I did this gap on this day. Here it is. It's very squished all the way back, and I remember this because I just did the class last month. Pay had a gap down here that happened in 2012. Take it across, take it across, take it across. The stock has never gone over the high of that gap down that day. The chart is broken, and it had another gap here in the earnings that just happened two weeks ago, and this shows you the power of institutional gaps, and this is the strategy I trade. You could have done any one of a number of things with this. I did the day trades in here all along. But you could have done this for a long-term swing trade or an option trade or investment. The stock has held for five years based on the power of that gap. The chart broke on that day. It was immediately in a downtrend and it has never looked back. And even in this rally here, the chart had not recovered. It has never gone over the high of the day of that gap. Now, that doesn't mean necessarily when somebody does it that, that, it's, that it's in a downtrend. But in this case here, it is. And it's a good example of something. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying targets had to look like this, but I'm saying it could, okay? But, and I'm definitely watching it. So the key for one individual, like you or me or anyone, is really to produce income over and over. And so you have to have something that you can do consistently to replicate. And that gets back to what I'm saying, the, the types of gaps. You chunk it out if you want to make money as a trader. And, and I, I, I roughed out there's about 36 more weeks left in the year. It might be 37. We're here at the end of March. But if, if you made 500 bucks a day trading, and this is not a crazy amount of money, you could make 90 grand between now and the rest of the year. So you chunk it out. It's not beyond the realm of possibility to make money trading. It's just that many people are not focused enough. So not only do I focus on the one strategy, which is gaps, I focus on the short side. And I just have a goal. And then, you're, and then you go in and you chunk it out. And you go in and you take what you can out of the market every day that you can by following your system. And that's how you do it, okay? You chunk it out, chunk it out, chunk it out, chunk it out. I took off vacation actually this past week. I did not trade at all. I took a, took a holiday. And, uh, but I have tracked here 
all of the trades before last week for the last seven weeks of this year. I started tracking them like I think it was January 23rd for this year. All the winners, all the losers, all the gaps. And the days where there were no gaps to my system to trade and my win ratio for 2017 has been 81%. So I've had 37 trades, 30 winners and seven losers. And that is how you make money trading. You chunk it out. And I'm only doing it in the morning. If, if I was someone that traded all day, I'd be exhausted by four o'clock and I probably would not make as much money. You, your idea of trading is just going in and finding the thing and doing it and getting out and getting out as quick as you can. And that's why shorting really, really is a good way to make money as a day trader because the moves happen fast. And the days when the stocks don't work, when they lose, like Urban was a loser, okay? The, not this past week, but the last week. Then, then you're out quick. I use hard stops when I trade. It's a limit order stop, but it takes me out. So the pain is over quick and then you stop, okay? You don't keep going after, going after, and going after, and going after it. So how do I figure this out with a checklist? That's my system and that's how I do it. And it, it determines a high probability directional bias. Big move on the day. Again, getting in between 9.30 and 10, which you do have to know how to do. And I'm looking at very, very precise entries. It's looking at the bigger time frame to, to, to pick the direction. And I'm looking at the one minute for the entry. Now let's look at some of these trades here. Let me just see if I miss any questions. And we're going to look at the day trade for Zoom Z. What time do I pace the trade? What do you mean pace it? What do you, what do you mean pace it? Take it? Well, we're going to go over that here in the Zoom Z. How much is my class, Derek, or how much do you need to start trading? I asked, answer the question, how much do you need to start day trading? You must have a minimum of $2,500 to open up a proprietary day trading account, and that place will give you 10 to 1 leverage. Uh, place, place, place. Where do I put the stop loss? We're going to go over here. We're gonna, let's look at the Zoom Z. This is the day trade. Close to your gap down. In the morning, I determined this was a good short. Now, here's the one minute. Again, boom, morning, stock closed here, gap down, open, rally, one minute, here's the volume, boom, short it, you're in, drop, boom, you're out, that's it. Do you see here if you waited, someone was saying about taking it after 10 o'clock, there, there was nothing in here that made any sense at all to predict, to take. So this, you can predict, which I do, and I take it, and I'm in, and then I'm out. So the price of the entry was $17.99. Stop over $18.50. It's about 50 cents. Wherever you get filled, hit, okay, when it breaks. On 2,000 shares, it's a $1,000 risk, which is an advanced risk. If you can't afford to risk this, then you risk less. Take 500 shares, okay? Either way, if you took 500 shares, what's your risk? $250, okay? Exit. It went past this, but this is the first drop and the first move, and that's how I time myself. It's about 50 cents. Boom, poom, you're out. First target, 17.50. Total profit, 900 bucks. You could have made in five minutes. So this is how you do it. You're in and you're out. You're in and you're out. You take it in, you're in and you're out. So I'm predicting that Zoom Z is gonna sell off into the open, and it does. Boom, take it, hit it. Stop, drop, out. This is the panic. This is the short selling. This is the price moving lower. Okay, here's the volume. This is a skill. It's a skill that many people don't have and I'm very good at it. And that's, that's why you'd come and you'd, you'd learn from me if you want to do this. The benefit is that you would be done trading very quickly and you wouldn't have to trade all day. And, and like I said, I found that what happens when I used to trade all day, my eyes and your brain, everything gets tired. And now we live in a world where we can't escape our phones and you get texts and you get phone calls and you get distracted. And when you're risking money, you should never allow yourself to get distracted. And you should be serious about what you're doing. And, and you know, based on the way that I trade and the amount of money that I'm risking, I have to focus on what I'm doing. I don't, I don't allow myself to be distracted by anything else in the period of time I'm trading. I always say I can be perfect for 30 minutes a day. And that's my goal every morning. But it is hard to be perfect for six and a half hours. The chances of that for anyone is next to none. But you can be perfect, like a, like a sniper, going in, finding the peck, taking the trade, 
looking for the panic. So here's the panic. Boom, boom. And it's the tail. So I'm actually shorting the tail and getting out before the bounce. Now, why would you want to do this? Because the stock isn't getting bought. Do you see what the stock did after this? See it? So what I did is predictable. Anything else isn't, okay? And that's why you don't, that's why you don't wait till after 10, at least not for, for gap trading. Because there's nothing else after that's predictable unless you have the market with you and a power trend all day and a stock with you in the same direction and a power trend all day. And you'd have to get the market directional bias correct too. So how did I determine Zoom Z was the correct gap to short? I found it on a, on a pick list in a, in a, in a watch list in a scanner. And you can, you can do this too. You can buy scanners. You can find earnings lists online. You can look in your top 20 lists of, of losers on the NASDAQ and the New York Exchange. Every platform should have this list for free. You can look for bullish ones and bearish ones in here. So I'm focusing on the losses. The losers here, the list, this gives you 40 picks. And they're all stocks that are gapping. Here is the actual gap itself in Zoom Z happening. Boom. Here it was at night, dropped. Here's the morning. Here's the open. So here's the gap happening at night. And then I would rank the gap with my system there at night. And that's how I do it. Now here's another one here. TLRD. Stock closed here, gap down. Boom. Look at this. Again. I'm predicting the directional bias of that, that the institutions are going to take the stock on the day and in the long term for you to trade it. Look how the stock fell from the 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th, or no, the 10th, the 13th, sorry, and the 14th. Look how it fell for these four days in here. It's still lower, by the way, okay? So here was a trade in here. Again, the one minute, and I am taking it between 9.30 and 10. Closes here, gaps down, boom, opens, rally, short it, take it, boom, stop, drop. Get the drop. This one kept going. Okay, it depends how long you want to hold it. Price of the short 1680. Stop over 1720. Again, a nice thing about trading aggressively in the morning is what? You do have small stops. You have small stops. 20 cents, 30 cents, 40 cents, 50 cents are not big stops. The longer you trade, the later in the day, you got to take trades in the five minute chart and the 15 minute chart. You can't trade in the one minute chart after 10 a.m. It's not going to hold. No stop that you take would hold. And it is good to use stops because your risk is assessed. If I lose in a trade, I'm not going to lose any more than, I mean, except for some slippage, what I have risked, which in this here case here, if I had 3,000 shares, it would have been 1,200 bucks. Again, stock kept going, broke 16. First target, 1625. Profit, $1,650. And this is in 15 minutes. And this is the benefit of shorting. And this is the benefit of knowing what stock to pick. And I'm only doing one a day. I'm only doing one a day. So the time it takes to make money shorting is attractive. It's very, very attractive because it happens so fast. What kind of risk to reward are you looking for? One to one, two to one, three to one. It depends how long you want to hold the stock. You can take the trade early and hold it till 10. Sometimes you get a bigger move. You can take the trade and get out quick and make one to one. And again, options trades is something else that I do on the side. I'm not going to go into detail about that today. Um, but you can make money with options trades as well, playing gaps. And very often what I'm looking for is 100% return of whatever I'm risking. So if I'm risking two grand, I'm, I'm looking to make two grand. That's how I look at myself when I'm doing the option trades. But it's, it's the precise entries combined with the gap momentum that tells me to take the trade in a certain, in a certain direction and at that specific time frame. So here, someone was asking how much money can you make? Again, if you wanna make $500 a day, it's totally doable. And that amounts to being more than six figures a year. I don't think this is a crazy goal for people. And you don't need some absurd kind of amount of money to do it because most of the stocks I'm trading are between a $5 price point and about 60, 65. Now every once in a while, we'll do something around $100, a little bit more, but not, not every day and not every week, okay? Even if your goal was something like making 150 bucks a day, that's still almost 40 grand a year and it's a great part-time job if you're only doing it for a few minutes in the morning. You can go on and do another job. You can trade at your desk in the morning and then do something else. You can start trading, trade in the morning for half an hour, work yourself into it, make $150 a day till you get good at it, then increase your risk, grow your account until you get to the point that you can be risking more money and making $2,500 a week. That's how you chunk it out. That's how you build yourself up. I was giving advice to someone the other day 
who has an account with like five grand. I said, get your account up to 10 grand. Get your, get your $5,000 account up to 10 grand. Don't take any money out until you do. Chunk it up there, okay? Every trade you take, your profit will get out. Chunk it up. Get that $5,000 account up to 10,000, and then you can start risking more, okay? And, and that's where people have to start out. Everybody wants to start, you know, risking $1,000. You can't do that if you have a $2,500 account. You've got to work your account up. And, and I find that many of the beginner traders that start out with me and their, you know, if their, their goal is 100 bucks a day or $200 a day tend to, tend to, tend to uh, end up doing very well because they exceed their own expectations find that they're not pressuring themselves at all and they ended up doing very well sometimes better than the people that are trying to make a thousand bucks a day so go easy on yourself whatever your goals are again it's it's different for everyone how long does it take to learn this my class is in two days you can learn it all in that two days i teach everything i don't hold anything back whether or not you'll pick it all up immediately though is up to you but you got to listen to what i say if you want to if you want to do well and that's part of the reason of being in the training with me and someone said, how much money do you need? A minimum of 2500 a day trade at a proprietary day trading account. And again, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com for that information. John is saying, do I get specific entry points with exact stocks for in the live room? The answer is yes. In fact, here, let me just talk a little bit about my class because we're running out of time. So my class teaches a 26-point professional bearish gap reading system. It is very specific. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. And I review this, it's about five minutes in the morning to look at one gap. You will learn the checklist in my class. And this is the reason for my success. And I do give the exact entries and exits. It's a complete system to learn how to trade. You will learn how to take these one minute entries between 9.30 and 10 in my course. Retakes are free. If you need to retake it, you can retake it as many times as you want to. The class is online. I usually do it once a month. The class is next weekend, March 25th and 26th. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. The class is from 9 to 5 Eastern time, and the cost of the class is $49.99. If you're interested, you can't sign up on the website. You have to email me for sign-up papers at melissa at the stockswish.com. Now, I am running a St. Patrick's Day special I started yesterday for my current marketing list, and I'm running it through tomorrow where I'm giving 10% off the class tuition, which I never give percentages off the class. I'm doing this for these three days, started yesterday, today, and Sunday, and I'm also giving the trading room free through July 4th, which is a lot of time to be in the trading room live with me and take the trades. This expires Sunday, March 19th. So someone was asking about the exact entries and, 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 and stops. The answer is yes. I do give that and is something as well about me that is very unique. I was talking to someone two weeks ago before I took the holiday. They were in another trading room and they said they think the person's making money that's running the room, but they can't follow them. And I said, I'm, what's, the point of, what's the point of being in the room then with the person? When you're in the room with me. You're listening to what I'm saying. You're taking the trades when I call them. I'm only watching one thing at a time. That's what I have up on the screen and you're following me. And if you want to see how I call the trades and how I do it, you can go to um, the Stock Swish on YouTube and you can listen to the room. I've taped the room many days. In fact, I taped the room the days of the Zoom Z and the, uh, and the other trades from two weeks ago. I taped the, been taping the room every day. So you can hear me call the trades live where I say to take it in live, live time. So I'm doing it, you're doing it, I'm calling it live, and that is the benefit of being in the room with me and following me. You must take my class, though, to join my trading room. If you want a trial, though, you can do a one-week trial. You can email me for that. You could do a trial for this coming week if you want to. You will not get the special because it expires tomorrow. But if you want a week in the room to trial, you can certainly have it. I'd say follow along or track the trades. If you know how to trade, you can, you can do it with me. But they do set up fast. And I suggest people, you know, learn first before doing. It, it's, it is something that you can do. It, it is not without the realm of possibility to do it. I do make it very easy for people to, to follow me because I'm only doing one thing and I call the trades. I have a friend of, that is an older gentleman. Um, he's been trading for about 25 years or so. And I just talked to him on the phone yesterday, and he likes to be in my room. He's my friend, and, and he's in a bunch of trading rooms. And I said, I don't know, I, I'm, why do you want to be in the room with me anymore? You know, you know what to do. And he said, because I make it easy for him. He said, you, you call, in, call the numbers, Melissa, and I just take it. You just make it easy for me. 
So he already knows, he might know that he likes the same stock pick as me, and then it gives him more conviction. If I say I like Zoom C and he already liked it, so then he gives him more conviction to do it too. But if I'm saying, you know, 99 by 25 or whatever, it makes it easy for him to pull the button and press it. Press it. And, and that is the skill that I have, and I, and I teach people that. But I think the room really is the basis for the support system for people that come and want to learn how to day trade that they follow me, the support system. And, and trading in that time of the day does happen fast. And so having a support system helps you. But you know, it's much more beneficial to make money in a few minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and to sit and wait for a trade to set up for an hour. That would annoy the crap out of me and I just don't trade like that and I won't do it. And I've tracked all these gaps. I've tracked all these gaps back for the last however many years I've been trading. 80% of the moves of these gaps happen in the first 30 minutes of the day. So if you're waiting till after 10 to take them, you're getting smaller moves with larger stops and then you gotta wait for the setups. And then you gotta have the market with you. You're really gotta have the market with you. And let me tell you something, you know, there's been a lot of stocks selling off. I mean, you go back and look at that that list. Uh, if, you, if you go back and look at the list of things that I had, um, for the last seven weeks of the, the trades that I've tracked, I mean, we have had some really good stocks selling off, some good short moves, considering how bullish the market's been this year. Could keep them make, climbing higher, making new highs. But you gotta have the right thing to do. You still have to have the right pick. And it doesn't matter if you get long or short, you still have to have the right pick, okay? So if you want the one week trial, you can email me here at info at the stockswish.com. Does anyone have any questions for me at all about anything? Oh, here's a little testimonial I put at the end. A anyone have any questions for me? Really quick, I gotta wrap up here. Any questions? Feel free to email me if you do have questions. I know some of you have questions about the brokers. You can email me there. It was good to be with, with everyone here on a Saturday. It's, it's, um, it's snowing, I think, here again in New York. <laughs> a, a few snowflakes out, um, but it was good to be with you all today. And if you have any questions, feel free to give me a call or email me. Thanks, everyone, for having me. All right, and thank you, Melissa. Appreciate you coming out today and taking time out of your weekend for us.